This is Oshini Dashgupta from Chitta.com. I'm a math Olympiad trainer and research advisor for students at Chitta. You are watching the first part of a three-part video series where we discuss the upcoming math Olympiad opportunities for students. In this first part, I will talk about students from grades 1 to 5. However, some portion of this video will be also useful for students of a higher grade. So keep on watching until the end. I have divided this video into three segments. In the first segment, I will talk about the appropriate mathematical contests, the Olympiads. Not all of them are built the same way. In fact, I'll tell you why some of them can have a negative impact on the students. So we should avoid them. I will talk about the ones that you should take it and try and prepare for. That's the first segment. In the second segment, I will discuss some learning strategies, some teaching strategies that we at Chinta have developed over the last 12, 13 years and have found them to be quite effective. So if you are a student or a teacher, you can directly use them from this video. Even adults, older students can use them. In the third and the final segment, I will tell you a little bit more about some excellent books for students at this level. I will talk about the titles and the authors. So let's get started. In the first segment, I'll tell you about the appropriate mathematical contests for students from grades 1 to 5. There are three contests that we recommend at Chanta. The first one is the Australian Math Competition. Excellent contest, excellent set of problems. The second one is known as the Math Kangaroo. Math Kangaroos were developed in France in the 90s and they are very popular in different parts of the world. And the third and the final one is specifically for American students. It's called Moems. It's a very nice contest with a very beautiful set of problems. You have to be very careful about choosing the contests that your child takes. Some of the so-called Olympiads have problems which push the students toward rote learning. We don't want that. We want the students to be imaginative, inquisitive, and the problems should be such that makes the students think. So if you are forcing your child to take a mathematical Olympiad, which is not really built on these principles, then having a lower score in those contests or pushing very hard to do well in those contests can have negative impact on the children. So be very careful about it. If you stick to these three contests, I think you will be fine. The questions are really nice and they are thought provoking in nature. The second segment, let's talk about the learning strat teaching strategies. Now, Chinta Math Olympiad curriculum is built over the last 12, 13 years. And we use many of these strategies to help our children. The first one and the most important one is about pattern recognition. So instead of teaching the students formulas, I mean, they are really little kids at this level. So don't try to teach the students formulas. Instead of that, sort of draw from them the patterns in numbers and spatial objects. Some students will do better in numerical patterns. Some of them will do better with shapes. So you have to recognize what your child specializes at. Do not worry if someone is not doing well with the number patterns with the arithmetic activities because they might do very well in the spatial patterns. In fact, 
the Chinta Math Olympiad program for elementary kids have these modules, numerical patterns, spatial patterns, separately. Of course, they, they overlap sometimes and we also handle that. So the first thing is pattern recognition. And you have to be careful, numerical patterns and spatial patterns, you should expose the child separately to both of these things. The second thing is about hands-on activities. This is a highly recommended part of mathematical training of a young mind. Remember, the child's brain is still at its formative stage. So you have to activate it using tools that makes the child think. So what kind of hands-on activities do we recommend? So we use some of them at Chinta programs. For example, we use paper folding geometry. We use origami. We use GeoGebra. So that's like a software where you can create mathematical models. We also use string and pencil constructions, making physical models of three-dimensional and two-dimensional objects. And we also use two other activities quite frequently. These are called Kendaku and Masiu. So you can look them up in the internet. We do them regularly in the classes and we also do provide them as homework problems. They bring the attention of the child. So these are, we call it attention grabbers. They brings in the attention of the child into the subject matter and makes them think. So it sort of activates the brain cells, the neurons. So pattern recognition, hands-on activities and helping them to imagine instead of memorizing. That's very important. Imagination is far, far more important than just memorizing. And it's even so more important from grades one to five. When the child's memory and the brain cells are sort of setting themselves up. Okay, so that's the segment two about learning strategies. The final and the third segment for this video is the set of books that we recommend. So there are four books that I'll talk about. The first one is called Math Circle by the Bay, Topics for Grades 1 to 5. So I have put the name of the book in the description. It's an excellent book. By the Bay means it, it, it's actually, it's, it's produced from a set of activities in the California region of United States. It's excellent and it's, it sort of builds on the Russian and the East European traditions of math circles. In fact, the second book that I have is a diary of a math circle from Russia. It's called Math Circles from 3 to 7 for preschoolers. This one is by Zovunkin. An excellent title. Contains a lot of problems and activities and interactions that you can do with the child. The third one is called Mathematics Can Be Fun. This one is by Yakov Perelman. And the fourth one, the final one, it's called Mathematical Circles for Elementary School Students. It's also uh, produced out of set of activities in the California region, in the Berkeley Math Circles. It's an excellent book. So I've put all the four books, the name of all the four books in the titles in the description so you can watch them or read them or use them the most important part of this time of their age grades one to five is to make them fall in love with the subject of course the hands-on activities help of course the books will help but finally they have to enjoy problem solving. 
So make sure to provoke their minds using thought provoking problems, not rote learning problems, thought provoking problems. Maybe at dinner table, maybe casually during your, your daily walk or daily exercise routines. It's extremely important that mathematics is imbibed as a culture of the entire lifestyle. So I hope this video was helpful. If you have more comments or ideas, let me know in the comment section. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.